everyone and welcome to today's Ask Your Biostatistician. Getting it right from the start, strategic sample size selection. I'm Kate, your host from Navitas Life Sciences, and we're thrilled to have you here with us. Whether you're designing an early phase clinical study or preparing a pivotal trial, one decision has an outsized impact on your trial's success, sample size selection. It may sound like a purely statistical exercise, but as you will hear today, it is much more strategic decision that affects costs, timelines, feasibility, and ultimately your regulatory outcomes. Joining me today are two of Navitas' subject matter experts, Bob Chastain, our biostatistics lead, and Dave Maslow, our clinical data management subject matter expert. Bob has over 30 years of experience in clinical trial design and statistical strategy. He's worked across all phases of development and a wide range of therapeutic areas from oncology to rare diseases and has supported numerous regulatory submissions, including NDAs and BLAs. With a PhD from Stanford University, a JD from Stanford Law and an MBA, Bob brings a unique combination of scientific depth and strategic insight to every trial he touches. We're very excited to have him here today to share his expertise on this critical topic. Dave brings over 20 years of extensive experience across the full clinical data lifecycle, from database design and data cleaning to overseeing large-scale global trial operations. With deep expertise in EDC systems, CDISC standards and real-world enrolment challenges, he ensures that our sample size strategies are grounded in operational reality. Dave's hands-on insights into site performance, data flow and interim analysis readiness are key to making our statistical models both practical and robust. With that, I will hand you over to Bob to get us started. Thanks, Kate. Hi, everyone. I'm Bob, the biostatistics subject matter expert here at Navitas. I'm joined by my Navitas colleague, Dave, the clinical data management subject matter expert. Thanks for giving us a few minutes today. We'd like to talk about something that can make or break a clinical trial, sample size selection. Thanks, Bob. It's easy to think of sample size as just a statistical calculation. But in reality, it's a strategic decision that directly impacts trial cost, timeline, feasibility, and ultimately your regulatory success. Exactly. The right sample size ensures that you have the power to detect a meaningful treatment dif difference without wasting resources. Based on industry published benchmarks, an overestimate error in sample size by just 10 patients could cost over a million dollars with average cost per patient of seventy-five dollars to $125,000. But getting it right isn't just about plugging numbers into a formula. It requires a deep understanding of your trial objectives, endpoints, and variability. Plus, smart assumptions based on prior data, benchmarks, and clinical judgment. And that's where the collaboration between our data and stats teams makes a real difference. For example, if there's a high expected dropout rate or sites that historically lag in enrollment, we feed that information directly into Bob's modeling to adjust the assumptions before the trial even begins. Yes, we often run scenario-based simulations, showing what happens if your treatment effect size is slightly lower than expected, or variability is higher than anticipated. We give you a range of outcomes so you can confidently plan for the most likely scenario and be better prepared for the unexpected. And we make sure those designs are grounded in real-world feasibility. We ask, can the sample size be achieved across your available sites and subjects be enrolled in a projected timeline? Is the data you need for interim and final analysis realistically going to be available in a manner with clean data to make decisions? That's right. We can help optimize the sample size for a pivotal study by modeling different effect size assumptions and showing how slightly larger sample might improve the chance of success under high regulatory scrutiny. That sample size adjustment could prevent a potential protocol amendment down the line or worse, even a potential trial failure. So if I understand correctly, we are in effect designing risk mitigation strategies by incorporating adaptive elements where appropriate or scheduling interim analyses to reassess assumptions based on real-time data. It's flexible without compromising integrity by pre-specifying adaptive strategies. We try to make sure data quality meets specific client needs while complying with the latest in good clinical practice, 
in the latest release of ICHE6 this year. Yes, plus our deliverables include regulatory ready sample size documentation, including simulation output and visual power curves where appropriate. We tailor everything to specific objectives, endpoints, indications, and our global strategy. So the bottom line, from understanding your point, Bob, here at Navitas, our biostatisticians do not just calculate sample sizes. We partner with our clients to select the right sample size based on the science and operational realities of your study. That's how we help clients reduce risk and increase the likelihood of trial success. Yes, we'd love to explore how we can support you and your team. Whether you're planning your first inhuman phase one trial, preparing for a phase three pivotal trial, or anything in between, including submission or post-market obligations, we'll make sure your design is strong, regulatory compliant, and efficient. Thanks again for your time. If you're interested or have questions, we're, we're happy to answer them and or discuss your specific needs.